Sean, if there are two reasons golfers come in to see us every week, one is distance, two is compression. Everybody wants to feel that ball just squeeze off the face, feel that, that sole of the club, take that divot, right? No more Wilson Pickett, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody wants to really compress the golf ball. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. We've all seen it on TV every week, right? You've got Pro X is hitting his iron shot mm -hmm. and he's in here and the club's coming down. The hands are up here by the front of the leg, shaft's leaning, he's got his head stable, ball just rockets off the face, the divot goes flying. It's like, that's what we want to feel when we hit iron shots, right? Yeah, and that's what we all are trying to feel. And you know, just over the years, it, just talking to a lot of uh, handicapped golfers, they'd rather hit it solid than they would do anything else in golf. Yeah, you can you can learn to score <laughs> yeah. if you know it's coming off the face solid. Yeah. If you don't know where it's coming off the face or how long or how short, scoring is it's secondary. Yeah, and hitting it solid, you know, not only do you get that great feeling, then you start turning your seven iron into six iron, right? Right, right. And getting more distance and that feeling off the club where the ball just squeezes off and you get extra club, right? Right. And the natural progression golfers will say, okay. I'm not compressing it, I'm not hitting it solid, I'm maybe just picking it right off the turf. So they'll start looking at impact drills. And okay, I gotta get the shaft more leaned or I've gotta stay down on it or bow my wrist more, all that. And that's never the solution. No, usually if you're trying to fix something at the ball, you're, you're looking at um, things a little too late down the chain. Right. Right, so let's figure out you know, why you're having a hard time, why you're scooping, why you're flipping, right? And then let's look at that and see how that changes the impact position. Right. What you have to really understand, and this, this, will, this will help your golf swing no matter what you're working on, is we all have the impact that we have, right? The look of impact, whether it's back here or up here, because we have to, to make the ball go towards the target. Yeah. Okay. So there are things you're doing leading up to impact that are forcing you to have that amateur type impact rather than the pro impact. That's what we want to help you fix today. Let's jump into gears and kind of show you exactly what's taking place so you can learn to do it. Golfers tell us every day they are trying to limit or even eliminate lateral sway so they can hit the ball more solidly by rotating better or being able to get more open. And you've probably heard it's kind of an either or scenario. You can sway or you can rotate, but you can't do both at the same time. Hopefully by the end of this video, we'll shed some light on what does happen in great swings but most importantly, show you how to apply it to your golf swing. This green dot you're seeing on the screen is the golfer's center of pelvis. No matter how we were to rotate the golfer, this dot will always stay in the center of his pelvis. From this vantage point, it's gonna be easy to see how his center of pelvis moves and rotates throughout the swing. When and where this dot moves is a big determinant of how solidly you'll be able to strike the ball. As our PGA Tour winner starts to move, notice the line numbers on the screen. A negative sway number means he's moving laterally away from the target. A negative turn number means he's rotating closed in the backswing. Positive numbers mean the opposite. Here he is at the end of his sway away from the target. This is his max movement off the ball. Notice how early in the backswing this is occurring. From this point to impact, all of his lateral movement is going back towards the target. Here he is back to 0-0 at the top. We coined this move years back as the recentering move. It's been cool to see the awareness of this move adopted by so many teachers and golfers. It's a big deal for your swing. We'll let him reach impact, and as he does, notice his rotation is always paired with sway. The two are never separate. Okay, now let's rewind him back to that spot where he was at his max away from the target. Now we're going to use this green line to show you the route his center of pelvis takes from here to impact. This is his pelvis trace. Notice how much ground it covers laterally and how relatively straight it is. We call this the line of rotation. And here it is blown up. He covers nearly seven inches of forward sway while at the same time rotating 124 degrees. There is no point in his swing where he rotates without sway. Let's look at another PGA Tour player. We'll stop him at his max sway to the right as well. And we'll put his pelvis trace here on the screen too. As he's moving through his swing to impact, notice where most of the rotation and lateral sway occurs. It happens from left arm parallel in the backswing to shaft parallel in the downswing. 
And again, there's no rotation here without sway. It's a blending of the two, not a separation that you should be striving for. He covers six inches and 113 degrees of turn across his line of rotation. These great players use this line of rotation like a race car uses a straightaway at the track. They use it to generate loads of speed. Both of those were seven irons. Now maybe you're asking, what about a line of rotation with a driver? Let's look at another pro. All of these guys, by the way, have a much deserved reputation for smashing the ball with tons of compression. As we move this multiple winner to his max movement off the ball, you're going to see it happens in a very similar amount and a very similar timing from our two iron swings. He also has that all-important straightaway shape to his trace as well. He covers six inches while turning 130 degrees across his line of rotation. So all in all, very similar movements with the driver as we saw with the irons. Now let's take a look at what we typically see with amateur golfers. This golfer has a pretty good move away from the target and falls between that three quarters of an inch to one and a half inch range we see with the pros. But from here, things start to look drastically different. This golfer told us he was trying to rotate early, get open, then push off late in the downswing to get his weight over to his left side. And to his credit, that's pretty much what he did. Only problem was he wasn't getting himself into position for it to matter much on his shots. He was actually moving backwards as he touched the ball something we don't see in pro traces. He did, however, manage to get to his left side. He was just doing it after the ball was already gone. His complaints were loss of speed, no shaft lean, and thin impacts. Unfortunately, we see this all the time. The idea of trying to rotate, then shift forward, sounds good on paper or online, but it doesn't really work out too well in an actual golf swing. By trying to make rotation and sway two separate movements, this golfer never created a line of rotation before his club touched the ball. Instead, he created a hairpin turn right before impact. He covered less than three inches and spun his hips 100 degrees, none of which he was able to use to get the speed, lean, or compression he desperately wanted. He never gave himself a straightaway to ramp things up and put himself in a good position. So the takeaways. Number one, rotation and sway happen together, never apart. We've never seen a pelvis rotate without it moving laterally. So it's up to you to move it in a way that helps rather than hinders. And number two, the bulk of your movement needs to be done by shaft parallel in the downswing. Early is good, late is a killer. So give yourself a nice line of rotation and you'll be putting your body in position to cover the ball and generate the speed and compression you want in your golf shots. All right, Sean, we just saw how the weight and pressure moves throughout the golf swing and how you really start to set up this impact covering the golf ball really at the takeaway or before the club finishes the takeaway. Now we've got our Sheftik pressure board and we'll put a link um, in one of the comments below the video. So you, if you're interested in getting this, you know, you'll be able to get it. And we use it all the time in lessons because it really forces you to feel where you're moving all that and when during the golf swing. Yeah, and this helps everybody. I've used it with David Toms. We used yep. it with Tom Kite yesterday when he came in. It just gives every level of golfer a good feeling on when the pressure moves and the difference kind of between moving the mass around and just pressuring this board right and left. Right. So if you'll stand up there on the, on the board, uh -huh. so one of the first things we see when we put golfers in this for the first time who are used to getting this lurch, this late lunge to the right, is when they feel that board drop down, they they get off balance and almost can't stay on the board. Yeah, so the, the trick to doing it correctly is to start with it about 50-50. Yep, as balanced as you can get it. Yeah, and then you're gonna step on the right foot without a whole lot of mass, just a little bit of bump to the right. Right. Right, and it kind of comes from down below. So I click it right. Now, as I'm making my way to the top here, something's gonna happen that, that a lot of you are missing in your swing. Once I get the club up to the top, I'm gonna fall on this left foot. Okay, and it might look a little more exaggerated with the drill, but I definitely, like you saw in gears, the upper body's shifting over to the left too. And once I get in that position, that's the thing that most of you are missing to hit solid iron shots. You don't have this side of the board down enough, right. early enough. Right, it should be right in the transition room. Yeah, so if I just did it with one hand so you could really see it, I'm to the right, club goes over my head, drop down to the left, and I'm turning around this front foot, front leg, right, front mm -hmm. hip, and that gets my hands where they should be ahead of the ball. Now you mentioned something, a great point about the exaggeration. Yeah. This is a drill. Mm -hmm. We're not asking you to go play with this thing. Yeah. So you're gonna see Sean's head move a lot because he's on a seesaw. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the head does move in the golf swing, 
But when he shifts over and that literally the whole ground for him is shifting, it's going to be an exaggerated move. So mm -hmm. don't worry about trying to keep when that shifts over, like you try to fall back behind or anything. This is a drill to teach you the timing of when and where the, the weight and body pressure move. And I can do it here. A great way to feel it just to do it continuous motion. And I can put that side of the board down before I start swinging down and start to get that rhythm. And notice that when he puts it the left side down again, He's, his mass isn't getting out past his feet. Yeah, it's the hip over the knee over right. the foot, basically, and that gets me in an ideal position to turn through the shot. We'll see that all the time, right? They'll, well, they'll lose balance this way, and then the first time they come down early, they feel that early and they're not ready for it, they'll kind of fall forward, right? So you've got to be, your legs have got to be more like pistons mm -hmm. and, and braces and anchors rather than you're trying to really push off. You're not pushing off in this. Yeah, and, and like I did a minute ago, this little rhythmic back and through might be the best thing to do with this drill to finally feel the timing right. of getting it early enough, left enough, and you can even chip little balls off of this to about right there and uh, start to feel that in the swing. And, and a lot of you will have the hands forward like you've never felt before, right? Exactly start right. Start compressing the ball. Exactly right. Now, let's, let's bring up one thing about that. We can close the video yeah. down. You will not lean the shaft. I knew you were going here. <laughs> you will not lean the shaft like you want if this face is open. I, I knew where you were going before you said it. Right, because when you lean the shaft forward, it opens the face. So if uh -huh. you already have an open face coming down, you will not, your best intentions, if you want to hit it to the target, you will start to give it this because that helps you close it. I will say this, you know, it may be a good sign if you actually do skank the first couple mm -hmm. because it means you're in a different spot. Right. Don't try to fix it by squaring it this way. Figure out the grip position that you need right. and maybe a little bit of this kind of uh, turning the knuckles down a hair to get the face square. Even up. up in here. Yeah, do it early here so you can have it down below. Right, so if you want the shaft lean, if you want the compression, first with the compression, you've got to move your body correctly so you can get your mass centered over the golf ball where it needs to be to deliver that shaft lean. Yeah. Then to get the shaft lean, you gotta make sure the face is working properly early enough so you can deliver it. And it, it's not something you're gonna to try to do, it's gonna be something that happens. Yeah. Which is less thinking, more playing, better shots. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you have a question about the video or there's a topic you want us to cover in a future video, leave it down in the comments below. We read every single comment and we respond to them. And that's how we create new content for you in the future. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you know exactly when one of our new videos comes out. If you want more compression on your iron shots, more tour quality solid iron shots every time you go out to play, we created a free video just for you. In the pinned comment below, you're gonna find a link. Click on the link, you're gonna be taken to another page, you're gonna enter your name and your email address. Once you do that, you're gonna be taken instantly to the free video training where you're gonna learn our number one go-to drill to get more compression on your iron shots, which is gonna allow you to hit more greens and have more fun playing the game.